My name is Allison Gottlieb. Uh, I'm a junior at Monta Vista, and my English teacher, who sadly couldn't be here today, is Mr. Bashirs, just like Anne. <laughs> that was a funny choice. Okay. In Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments series, Shadow Hunters are a secretive race of half human, half angel warriors who protect the earth from demons using semi permanent tattoos called runes that give them special powers. Clary, our main character, grew up in the mundane world, the normal human world, never knowing that her mother, Jocelyn, was a shadow hunter, or that her presumed dead father was another shadow hunter named Valentine, a firebrand who orchestrated an uprising that killed many people. While we get most of Jocelyn's story as narrative when she eventually tells it to Clary, I was so intrigued by her story that I always wanted to get some flashback scenes actually showing some of their lives as teenagers and how they fell in love. So since Cassandra Clare failed to deliver, I decided to write them myself. <laughs> this is an excerpt from my piece because I sadly write my writing always seems to take on a life of its own and it's way, way too long for me to read the whole thing. So this is an excerpt. I apologize, this is a little confusion at the start. Jocelyn clutched her sketchbook tightly against her chest, torn between her yearning to retreat to the safety of her room and her sudden, unfamiliar desire to stay here with this boy. She couldn't deny that he was handsome, albeit in an, un in an unconventional way. That cold, fine-featured face and hair so fair was nearly white. And there was something about the barely controlled sorrow in his eyes that made her feel almost protective of him. Awakened the part of her that wanted to help anything sad and lost. But her sketchbook was like a diary to her, an incredibly private thing. She almost never showed anyone her sketches. And grieving or not, he was still Valentine Morgenstern. I, I really don't show my work, she stammered. A smirk crossed his face, as if he knew just how uncomfortable his indirect request was making her feel. In that moment, Jocelyn was reminded just why she had an aversion to him before. But you show Lucien, he said casually, slowly walking towards her. Her heart beat a staccato rhythm against her chest. I, I, I've known Luke since we were children, she said, fighting to keep her voice from trembling. That's different. His eyes seemed to be laughing at her. Perhaps I want to know you that well. Is that so unimaginable? An errant curl fell on her face, and slowly he reached up to push it back, his fingers lingering against her forehead for just a touch longer than necessary. Her eyes slid closed of their own accord, her grip on the sketchbook tightening so much she worried it might break. When she finally opened her eyes, it was to see him staring at her, his dark eyes meeting her green like he could see right through her. That's really not fair, she thought. He can see everything I'm thinking, and his eyes don't show a thing. You, you're not like what I thought you were. She bit down hard on her tongue to keep the second part of that thought from coming out and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. His lazy smile sent tingles of heat rushing through her veins. I'll take that as a compliment. The loud bong of the clock tower made her jump, though he seemed as unshakable as ever. Until next time, Jocelyn. She shivered at the way he said her name, like a caress. It took her another few minutes before she was able to recover her mind and start to run to class, praying she wouldn't be late. Jocelyn tried to push that strange encounter out of her mind, throwing herself into her studies with a novel vigor that pleased her teachers and made, and made Luke ask her quietly if something was wrong. Nothing's wrong, silly, she insisted. But that night, alone in her room, she filled up a sketchbook with, a draw, with drawings of a boy with white hair and black eyes, harshly, be harshly beautiful and strangely fascinating, <coughs> looking like he belonged amongst the ice and snow. And when she finally put down the pencil and stared at what she had created, she had the feeling of having unknowingly crossed an invisible line from, from which there was no going back. The thought both excited and scared her in equal measures. Thank you.